Hello. Hello. Right, so a while ago, we'd done some reviews on tyres, and we, we'd done lots of reviews on tyres, actually, mm. and we've done them in the rain, talking about how good they are and all the rest of it, and I was looking back through one of the videos, I think we made it about three or four years ago, and somebody had put a comment on there saying, it'd be good if you did a, a video about riding in the rain. So we do things rapidly, and three or four years later, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's not raining. No. So, what we thought we'd do first is talk about things you should consider about riding when you're riding in the rain. Mm. And then when it rains, which it's going to do because we've had a horrendous July in Cornwall. Yeah. Um, we'll go out and do some riding in the rain. Yeah, or you will. <laughs> I will, yeah. You're not yeah. going to video them, man. Pardon? You're not going to video it then. OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, so, riding in the rain. A lot of people don't, will not take their bike out in the rain for many reasons, you know, oh, I don't want to get it dirty, don't want it, but a lot of people are really scared about riding in the yeah, rain. Yeah, yeah. And I found that a bit odd, personally, because I ride all year round, a lot of people ride all year round. When you're on tour, you don't get a choice in the weather. If it's raining, you've still got to get up and ride, so, you know, you're forced to do it. Mm. But I get people who come on tours with, oh, I'm really not happy about riding in the rain. It's in here. But having said that, I suspect the reason that it's in your head, it was in your head, but the, but the reason that people get affected by it is it makes you very insular. It closes the world into you. If you think, if you think inside your helmet when it's sunny, everything's open, everything's free, you know, you, everything's fine. It starts raining, you've got your visor shut, it might be steaming up, there's rain on it. Every time you open, it's like needles in your eyes. Everything feels closer, doesn't it? And people get tenser. Yeah, yeah, and it's... You know, I think you're missing out by not being able to ride in the rain. I think it's a must because you could be caught out anywhere. Exactly. And I've had people... I've been going up... Uh... Campbell Hill coming down? <laughs> I was trying <laughs> to think of something else, but you've thrown me now. I've been on tour and I've had people going up and down passes and they've been really, really not sure about what, 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 how to ride them, you know, hairpin bends in the mm. wet, and it's like, you know, I don't like riding hairpin bends anyway. And I've been going around, you know, going first gear, second gear, third gear, third gear, you know, and all this yeah. one-handed going around hairpin bends in the wet just to build the confidence up of the people who are behind me. And that's not saying that I'm any good at it. It just means I might be a little bit more confident having done it many, many times yeah. before. So if you're going to go out and ride in the rain, what have we got to think about? Let's start with the bike. Well, let's start with you first. All right, we'll start with me. Before you even get on the bike. OK, so... A positive mental attitude. Everything will be fine. OK, nothing's going to happen. Don't get affected by the fact that it's raining. Try, mm. try and tell yourself, actually, I'm going out for a ride and it's a normal day and I'm riding to the conditions rather than it's raining and I'm going to tense up with everything and be in a bad mood that, oh, this country's rubbish because it's always raining. No, 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 no. You, you're right about everything there. You have to be in a positive mental attitude to get on your bike. But before you do that, you've got to think about what kit you're wearing. Yeah. All right, now, kit is really important. Years ago, when I first started riding, I couldn't afford anything. I was riding in three jumpers and, you know, four pairs of jeans or something just to stay warm. Now I'm very lucky. I can afford to buy a, a, a Gore-Tex suit, yeah. you know, but... It's all about resources for courses, isn't it? I but do, there, but... Are, there are really good stuff at different price points, aren't there? So your budget can also reflect good stuff as well? Absolutely. You know, I do between 15, 20,000 miles a year. I need kit that I know is going yeah. to be lasting for a lot, quite a long time. But there are different types of kit. You can buy a once-only suit, uh, a suit that fits over your normal riding gear, that's waterproof suit. You can buy waterproof trousers waterproof jacket the best waterproofs i've ever had cost me 50 quid and they were a gore-tex um military you know camouflage jacket in sand camouflage mm. i got it from an, ar an army store and this is only a few years ago and it was fantastic and i didn't buy the green camouflage because obviously that's camouflage and we we're riding around in a green yeah area but the sand camouflage mm. stands out really well and it's completely different to high vis or anything like that People were noticing it straight away, but it was bomb-proof, absolutely mm. bomb-proof, and I rode through some hideous weather with it, and then I got a different suit. So, But that is a, a viable option if you're looking for a waterproof suit. I've got a banana suit for BM, from BMW, one of those oh, yeah. yellow Onesies. suits that go over. Yeah, I think I've had it a while now. 
really nice, but you boil in the bag, it can yeah. be quite hot inside them if you're in a foreign country. So it's all about choosing what you're going to be doing, what, what kit you're going to be wearing. And also gloves. Like we're always wide with gloves, even in the hottest of the summer, yeah. there's different types of gloves. But what I will say, if you're riding in the winter in the rain and you have Gore-Tex gloves, cold as your hands might be, you can't use the heated grips. Yeah. So it's hot on the, or hot on the inside where, you, where your skin is and your heat pushes the moisture out through the Gore-Tex suit. Okay, if you then put uh, your heated grips on so it's hot on the outside, it then sucks water in and pumps it through into the glove. So your glove is wet with very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So you just have to suck it up. If it's raining, it's not necessarily going to be cold. Duh. Do you know? Yeah. So just take that into account. Um, if you're wearing with just pure leather gloves, they're going to get wet. If you're happy with that, that's fine. In the summer, I don't even bother. You know, I've got summer gloves. I just ride them. If they're soggy, they're soggy. They dry out really quickly. So that's gloves. You've got a helmet to think about as well. Loads and loads of different types of helmets, okay? And most helmets now come with a pin lock. And I hear people on tour going, oh, I've taken my pin lock out, it leaks and all this, you know, and it gets, gets misted up. The reason for that is, and we've done a video about it ages ago, is on the side of your pin lock, there's two little screws you might not mm. notice. It's an offset uh, cam. So if you think of a camshaft in a, in a car, it's different levels, it, doesn't, it, it rotates, but it's like different things to make the pistons go up and down. This offset cam is there to tighten up the pin lock against the screen. And you can, it's really easy to do. If you just look on, go online and find our video, but go online, you'll see how to tighten it up. So the, the little seal is always tight around the, the visor. And then there's a visor. You can spend an absolute fortune on visor cleaner. You know, you've got these little, little I've got this little yeah. visor cleaner in my pocket, you know, it's great. <clears throat> I used Pledge. From the pound shop? How much is it in the pound shop? Pound. <laughs> so I used Pledge, and that's because it's beeswax. It's really soft. Spray it on, and it's like, you know, uh, was it Rain-X? Yeah, it puts a film on there, It just puts it? a film, but the water runs off it. Yeah. You know? And so it doesn't stay on there very long. In slower traffic, it's hard, you know, and you have, might have to lift it a little bit, mm. but yeah, that's the way it is. But if you're riding along on a motorway or something like that, it's clear all the time. And if it doesn't clear, all you need to do is turn your head to one side. Yeah. And or lean one side or the other outside of the... The screen. Outside, you know, this side or that side where you're getting all the air. Yeah, so that's when we, we you know, helmets and things like that. And obviously, you've got to think about the vents. If you've got all your vents open, water's going to get driven in there. I've got a helmet at the moment. When it does rain, I get a little drip. I can feel it it's coming. It's not your new one, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I felt it the other day with all the vents wide open. Yeah. I got a little drip coming out. Oh, well, out. that's why you had the vents open. Exactly. Yeah. So you think about whether you close them down or just have ones at the back open, you yeah. know. Things like that to be taken into account. And taken what? into account that you will get wet. You're going to get wet. When you stop and take your gloves off, your arms are lower than the rest of your body. All the water is going to drip into your hands. Everything you touch is going to be wet. So when you're riding along, you have long, long gloves and you have short gloves. Some suits are good enough to get your sleeves inside the glove and tighten the glove up and then the water gets driven up, but you're going to get wet anyway because the water, if you're in riding for a long time, the water's going to go eventually seep down inside. Likewise, your crutch is always going to get wet because all that water that's coming to the front of your body is going to pull down around here, mm. you know? And so you will get damp. Gore-Tex suits work brilliantly to get rid of it but if you've got a broken zip, it just gets driven in. Water is lazy, it finds the easiest place to get into your suit, yeah. and then it just soaks you, okay? But that brings me on to another subject. What do you wear underneath your, your bike gear? Commando! Ooh! <laughs> if you're riding in the summer, chances are you're gonna have just like a Halley Hansen top, a wicking top, something like that. And if it's hot and it starts raining, it's not necessarily a problem. If you're riding in the winter, and you get wet, you're gonna get cold very, very quickly. And we talk about hypothermia, you know, and how it's gonna affect your ride. And that can be really, really dangerous. So you've got to think about a layering system. I can't believe people still wear cotton when they're riding their motorbikes in hot weather, because they get off and they're just absolutely soaked. Mm. So think about buying uh, 
mesh, you know, wicking type stuff. And they're really cheap now, aren't they? Really, really cheap. I mean, you can buy Halley Hansen zip up neck things that are 80 quid. Or you can go to a place like Military First, ex military yeah. kit, and you can buy a Viper one exactly the same for under £15. Yeah. You know, and it does exactly the same thing. So, wicking kit, and you can wear it, afford to wear a couple of layers of that, but it will keep you warm when, they, when you get wet. So, they're things to consider. Boots, I've seen people spend an absolute fortune on boots that have leaked from the very day, the very first day they've had them. But these are Gore-Tex boots, and you go, okay, you know, yeah. you don't have to spend a lot of money. The best pair of boots I've got are a pair of um, uh, military... Old bags or something, aren't they? No, no, no. They're, um, I think they're German Special Forces boots, actually. Mm. Gore-Tex, feet are bone drying them. Yeah. I've but, you've got to remem- but you've got to remember to put your legs over the top of them. <laughs> you know, there are yeah. lots of people that will, wear, that will get all this stuff Top of the range Gore-Tex are 100% waterproof, but then they'll tuck their trousers inside and allow all the water to run straight inside. They're not going to be waterproof, are they? I was on a tour and I took Cornish Stig and I bought her a pair of boots, a pair of ex-army boots. They were extreme cold weather boots, Gore-Tex, and they cost about 60 quid. And I worked on the assumption that my boots, my feet when I was in the military, never were never wet unless I actually you know, immerse them in completely in water. So I put a show, I hate them, I hate them, my feet look stupid. We were on a tour, about 10 days in, we'd had rain for a long, long time. And she came in the room and she went, I love my boots. Yeah. And I went, why is that, babe? She goes, because somebody on the tour bought a TCX, is it? Or something Oh yeah, like I think TCX is a mate. About yeah. 450 quid's worth. Yeah. She said, I've just walked past her in the foyer and she's emptying her boots out oh. and just outside the foyer. I just said, are your feet dry? She said, yes, don't tell anybody. (laughs) But talking about budget, if you haven't got the budget to buy brand new ones, simple little things like a Tesco cat or a carrier bag, putting your feet in the carrier bag, then in the boots. And some boots... They're not going to be that breathable. They're going to get get, wet because your feet are going to sweat. But But you can buy Gore-Tex in socks that that will fit inside a boot anyway. So And they're they're a a pretty good option. Mm. So I think that's clothing done. Yeah. We need to talk about a bike now, don't we? And you've got to think about this. I've got a bike. This is my little baby. Hmm. So, when we... Sorry, I was still looking at the bike. You were? Yeah. Look, let's go this back is and... Barney. Back yeah, but let's bike. talk about a bike. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I really like that bike, mate. I'm very, very envious. So, again, things you need to think about when you're, when you're riding are the tyres. These are the tyres down here. You're going down yes. slowly, aren't you? I can okay, see the so tyres. We have conversations with people and I say, you know, look at the tyres. They go, oh, yeah, they've got fantastic grip. Look at all this lot. OK, these things here... The grooves. The grooves are for wicking water away. Now, these tyres are a slightly off-road tyre, so they've got bigger grooves. OK, and that's for squirting mud out. But when you talk about grip, this is where the grip is on your tyre. On so the that, bits that stick out. On the, on the flat bits here. Yeah. These pieces here are just for squirting water away from the, the contact patch. Yeah. Okay. And the best way to, to look at that is, I've said it before in other videos. And you'll say it again? I will do. Okay. I'm going to do it right now. Is if you follow, go alongside a truck on a dual carriageway in the wet and see how much water is being pushed out of their tyres through the grooves, that's what your bike tyres are going to do mm. with those grooves. So that's what it's all about. It's about dispersing water away from the contact patch here so that stays dry and in contact with the, ro- with the road. Um, with the road. There's something else that people don't think about as well. How many times have you been on a straight motorway or a straight piece of road and there's a car that's spun off into a, cor- into a hedge somewhere? Quite a few times. Happens quite a lot. Yeah. And that's to do with cruise control. Bikes yeah. are fitted with cruise control. Which is... Absolutely fantastic, Amazing. until it rains. Until it rains. Now, what happens is, when you're riding along and you get the signs of standing water, you know, a bit of water running across the road, something like that, and you're in cruise control, for that fraction of a second, if you imagine going over a grid or a manhole cover and you get that little, oh, what happens there is the bike loses its traction for a fraction of a second, okay? Now, in a car, and they were in cruise control, they've got two wheels driving the car, a little bit of loss of control, it's called aquaplaning. The water separates the contact patch from the road and suddenly that's why they spin off. So cruise control is fantastic, 
you've got to be really careful if you're using it in the wet. Well, you shouldn't really use it in the wet for those reasons, should you? But people argue against it. Oh, I always use cruise control. OK, well, the ultimate thing is if you lose grip, you lose grip, suddenly it gains grip in a fraction of a second, yeah. destabilises the bike and you can spin. So that's the whole point of not using the cruise control. So make sure your tyres at the correct pressure. OK, you should check your tyres once a week anyway. You know, we're really lucky because these have got tyre pressure monitors on them. I check mine every time I ride it. It's just the thing I do. I can't stop myself. I'd like to drive away and go, oh, I don't have to check my tyres. Oh, I've got to do it, I've got to do it. But at least once a week, check your tyres. Now, the minimum tread. When we're training guys for their advanced bike test, we say to them, what's the minimum tread depth? And they go, 1.6 millimetres. Nope. And on a bike, it's one millimetre. Which is bizarre, isn't it? Because there's only two of them. Really strange. And that's over 75% of the tread. OK, so 75%. So you're checking in there in the groove. And it's a really easy thing to check. If you look at the side of your tyre, somewhere along the edge, you'll have a little thing, a little mark on it. You just see it there. I don't know what it says on it, T-something, or there'll be a little diamond. Yeah. And it, if we imagine... Oh, there's one here, look, right here. Can you see that? I think so. OK, so that's where you check your tread. Now, what you do is you bring your tread... Depth Finger? ...indicator thing, yeah. and it's right into the middle of the tyre, which is here. And this is where you're checking it. Now, I've seen people say, oh, yeah, you get a wear indicator. I'm trying to find one now on here. That's the wear indicator or something. There you go. That's not where you check your tyres, fellas. Yeah. You check it in the middle of the tyre, OK? So you're looking for one millimetre, but you do it at least three points around the tyre so you can get an average tread depth. Yeah. That's sensible, isn't it? Yeah, you should do that anyway. So that's that. Screens. Screens should be clean. We use dry sparkle. Yeah. Got that in there, didn't I? I yeah. also use pledge. <laughs> dry sparkle is really good. It's really good because it like, puts a polymer on it and so the water just runs off. OK, so clean he uh, headlights, clean screen. Mirrors. Obviously, we need to have clean mirrors and you need to make sure your rear lights are also clean as well. Just looking at the mirrors. And looking your rear lights. And my lights. Yes. Which lights are they? These are the Visor Technic lights. Oh, you yeah. think I'd remember that, didn't They've got to be clean, haven't they? they? Always have to be clean. Yeah. I'll just switch them on so you can see how bright they are. Oh, they're bright. They're not flashing in real life. No. So on these ones, uh, on the new BMWs, you only have those. You have those multifunction lights, which we've already spoken oh. about. This has a... Um, uh, the, the rear light is lit all the time. And then yeah. when you use the rear brake, it lights up as well. And it's important for people to be able to see when you're braking. Yeah. And I always find it strange that these lights are very bright. Why don't bikes have a fog light on them? I know. Some of us ride all year round and in fog. Yeah. But these, I've, got, I've had people flashing me as if because they think they are fog yeah. lights. They're actually better than that, you know, because they're bright all the time. So, we've spoke about uh, uh, our helmets, our, our, our kit spoke about the tyres, now we'll speak about the technology that bikes have, which is phenomenal, but you don't necessarily need it. So if we look at our bikes here... This bike there? This bike here and look yeah. at the screen. OK. You'll see we've got different modes. Dynamic Pro. Dynamic Pro. I've got Enduro Pro. Rain. Oh, rain. Rain. Now, what does that rain setting do, then, do you think? It sets the bike up for the rain. And all it does is, because this is a fly-by-wire throttle, it just means that when you twist the throttle, it's not as aggressive mm. as if it was in dynamic or, you know, sport mode or anything like that. So it's taken into account that the roads are wet and you need to build up your speed steadily rather than just go, bosh, and I want yeah. instant speed. Because if you do that, what's going to happen is your rear wheel's going to spin, and then you fall off. <laughs> Very simply, yeah. I don't ride it in rain. OK, I ride it in road all the time. And the reason for that is when it's raining, I take into account myself and go, oh, it's wet. I can't afford to ride as if I was on a dry road and all the rest of it. So I just ride it in road. What we're talking about there is grip. Yeah. Tire grip. Now, I ask this question loads of times when I'm talking to guys about uh, advanced motorcycling and, you know, when you're riding in the rain, how much grip do you think you lose? 
And the others go, oh, I don't know. I said, well, give me a percentage figure. 60%, there's a, there's a number, Mark. And that comes up really regular. I'm going 60%. The actual words of wisdom that come from people who make tires is you lose about 20% of the grip of your tire when the tire is working at 100% of its capability, mm. right? Valentino and Rossi worries about things like that. I'll never have to worry about something like that. So if we're losing 20% of the tire's grip at 100% of the tire's capacity, and I know it's wet, and I'm not riding as high as if I would in a sport road, I reckon that on a really, 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 really good day, the maximum capacity use, maximum capacity of the tire that I would use might be up to about 70%, 75% if I'm being big headed. Yeah. So in the wet, it means I'm using very little, losing very little. In my head, I'm riding on an ice rink. And that's the problem, isn't it? In your head, every manhole cover's really slippery, white paint's really slippery, oh, there's a corner, you don't look where you should be going, you know. But that's why I don't change the, the modes, because I ride in road mode all the time on the bike, and I just take that into account. Yeah. I'm not aggressive with the throttle, I'm smooth and progressive with the throttle. I found that if you put it in the rain mode, you can be a, it gives you a false sense of security. Oh, I can ride a little bit faster. Well, it's funny now. you should say that, because I, I use the rain mode if I'm going somewhere and it's a long way and I don't know where I'm going, and it's really bad rain. And I've never really thought that oh, you'll just ride to it straight, straight, st st the same capacity as you would do normally. I've just ridden. Never the really rain fixed. mode is taken into account yeah. that you've just ridden. Yeah, yeah. All right, what I'm saying is when I ride, I just leave it in the road mode and I just ride to the conditions I've got in front of yeah. me. Okay, which is how you should be riding anyway, you know, and... You know, visibility's not that great. You know, there's spray everywhere. People are get too close to you from behind, won't they? You know, all those things. And I've seen, well, let's talk about those issues then, because I've seen people riding really close to, to vehicles they're following. Yeah. I mean, who wants to get behind a truck that's throwing out spray and they put themselves on the rear quarters if they're going to overtake it and they're less than a second away from the back of yeah. it? He can't see you. He can't see you because of the spray. You're getting absolutely soaked. Isn't it better to just drop way back? And we have a, a two-second rule which we use in motorcycling. Although yeah. it's not a... It's not a, a law, but it's a rule that we all ride to because it's safe, isn't it? So, generally, you can stop within two... If you're riding at two seconds interval behind a vehicle, you can stop at two seconds or put yourself into a position where you, you're not going to be injured, you're not going to be compromised, let's say. If you're going to overtake, you move up to the one-second rule. If the overtake isn't there, you drop back it again. Now, in the wet, you can ride... And I know people are going to say you should be riding further away than that you can ride at three to four seconds behind. And the reason for that is there might not be so many overtakes to do because it's wet and it's crappy yeah. and you can't see. So you take that into account. So you drop further back. It also means you're not gonna get wet. But if you're riding behind a truck, okay, all the spray is coming out of the, each side of a truck, for example. The driest part is at the back of it, in the middle of it, if, it's, if that makes sense. Yeah, because so, yeah, all the wind is if you imagine, it, if you imagine this is yeah. the, the trailer part of a truck, water spraying out here, water spraying out there. If you put yourself right in the centre, and then that's where the driest bit is. I'm but not he, aiming to stay dry, I'm aiming to stay alive. But he can't see you there. Yeah. So how far back do you think you've got to be? A long, long way. About 200 metres on an Arctic truck yeah. before you can see his mirrors. So the best thing to do is to drop back and just put yourself onto one side where you can see his mirrors. And then it's safe then. And yeah. if you can have an overtake, do an overtake. I would say the chances of overtaking in the wet are, are not as often. Greatly reduced, aren't they? Greatly reduced, so you've got to be really certain about mm. doing it. I'm not sure if there's anything else to talk about. Do you think? Well, I think just making, making um, allowances in what, how you would normally ride. So double checking. So over, overtake is only 100% on if there's not something that's wrong about it. If yeah. there's anything wrong about it, it's 100% off, isn't it? Yeah. But you should... I guess if you're overtaking in inclement weather, you can't really see that well, like it's a summer's day because it's raining, then you should double check that. It might take a little bit longer to do those manoeuvres, so plan for those manoeuvres taking a little bit longer. One thing I will say is in, when we're using advanced riding, we use this IPSCA system, which is information, speed, gear and acceleration. Within the information, there is a thing called take, use and give information, yeah. TUG. And we take the information from all the things we see around us, 
you know, from road conditions, signposts, what the car users are doing. And we give information. We give information by using lights, indicators, our position on the road and things like that. You mentioned a point before when people come up too close behind you. And I've seen people get really angry about that. You don't have to get angry on a motorbike because car drivers all think we carry, we're baby killers and murderers and we carry big chains. Okay, it's really easy to subliminally tell somebody that they're too close. And it's just by simply taking the time to look over your shoulder back at them, yeah. all right? Their subconscious picks it up straight away. Their conscious is like, uh, oh, because they're a car driver. Yeah. But their subconscious picks it up because something changed different there. And quite often, nine times out of 10, you'll see the car drop way back. Well, and it's quite funny because you watch a lot of people on YouTube on these um, dash cam videos and stuff. And a lot of people on motorbikes, actually, and I'm not knocking people on my bikes, but they're riding along. Somebody's really close behind and they're turning around sticking the v's up getting really aggressive i've had it quite a few times where somebody's been really close and all i've done do you want to hold this all i've Ooh, done we're gonna get a demonstration yeah, yeah. hang on i'm gonna turn oh, shall it around I, shall i go over here i'm gonna all, all you I've... just wanted to get your bike yeah, yeah, in didn't you yeah. that's all it was all all i've done is i've t turned around and i've just gone get back just like that that movement isn't aggressive and it really works because people just suddenly drop back and they don't realize how close they are. No. It's about you communicating with them. Doing all this and going like this, it's just gonna get you wound up and change the way that you ride. But just going, I'm really annoyed with you, just get back. That movement. I found that just to really even works. turn around and not do the hands yeah. and like a stare is enough to make them go, oh. Care Bear Stare. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the video. Back to the video, that's me. So we've, we've spoke about quite a few things there in a bit of depth, but what we're gonna do is when it rains, we're gonna go out and do a ride in the rain and we'll go through it all and explain how we, how yeah. we, we actually do it. Because the main thing is you should enjoy your ride, dry or wet, doesn't matter. We still ride in the wet. I would say that if you're a biker that doesn't like riding in the rain, go out and ride some of the roads that you've, that you've always ridden in the rain and just practice getting a little bit more confident because half of it is about being really tense when it's raining and when it goes wrong, a lot of it, 99% would you say, Mark? of riding on the bike is being comfortable on the bike in the surroundings and riding to and those conditions. it's about conditions. having confidence. I mean, yeah. we haven't, we never, I just realized we never spoke about braking while you're riding. Oh yeah. Okay, so in advanced riding, what we, we tend to say is being in the right speed, in the right gear at the right speed, you know, and using your engine for braking. Now we say engine braking, and people say, oh, engine brake is gonna ruin your engine. Look, there's a 1250 engine here on a bike that weighs 260 kilos, you know, very few miles on it. It's not war, it's not being thrashed, it's not being ragged. Okay, you buy a car with 50,000 miles, there's only a thousand cc engine, you know, that's been ragged. So these aren't being screamed, you know, they're not being ragged at all. So when you're riding with your bike to drop down a gear, as you're coming down slowly in your speeds, in the wet is often a lot safer than actually trying to apply a brake. People use the rear brakes a lot. The rear brake won't stop your bike, okay? And the, when you're off-road, the rear brake is a friend. When you're on-road, the rear brake is for, for navigating. Well, it's, it's part of a braking process, but not the braking process. Exactly, but you know, it's more for you for slow maneuvering. Yeah. If you're going from 60 down to a 30. You're not okay. ramming your back brake on because that will overtake the front brake and then off you go. So we're using our front brake in conjunction, conjunction with changing gears and slowing down. Yeah. Engine braking is fantastic. On these, they're amazing. On a boxer engine, they're just it's phenomenal. But all bikes have engine braking. And that is your friend in the wet weather. Mm. As soon as you start applying a pad to a disc and slowing the bike down that way, the bike may get a little bit unstable in wet weather. And think about the grip of your tire. Okay, you're asking a lot more of your tire to, to there then. And so think about gears. And it's about being smooth with your gear changes, not ragging it, not yeah. a handful of acceleration bring it down nice and steadily and then you stop and the acceleration is the same way because as soon as you start to accelerate the bike does that all the weight goes on the back of the bike okay and that wheel then has to get grip if there's water underneath it it's going to take a while before it gets grip it might just flick itself out so it's about being smooth and steady and if you think about emergency riders emergency service police paramedics those people when they ride 
follow them. They're really, really smooth. And they're smooth in the wet and they're smooth in the dry. Nothing changes. It's just about how you ride. So what we're going to do now is wait for the rain. Won't be long. Yeah. It'll probably be in the next video. Yep. Because that's a long one, obviously. So if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. The next video. I liked it. <laughs> the next video, it'll be wet and miserable. And I'll try to be happy.